Good evening, everyone. Thanks, that was really good. This is such a perfect place. I'm glad I found this with you. So, what if I told you that this person, Yasmin Karachiwala, who is now a celebrity fitness instructor and inspires a lot of people, was the laziest kid on planet Earth. Let me tell you the story about her. She would come back from school in her uniform, do a little bit of homework, or maybe just go straight down to play, come back, uh, eat a snack, which was always fried food, Mom would always be screaming, stop eating fried, it's not good for you, even I think about 40 years back. But she wouldn't listen, she would still be eating everything she wanted and wouldn't change out of her uniform. Mom would be like, wear some decent clothes, take a shower, lounge in front of the TV, not get up to go get a glass of water, just sit there watching TV until it was time for dinner, have dinner and then change into night suit because mom wouldn't let her go to sleep in her school uniform, which she would have loved to do. That kid, believe it or not, was me. Some days I wouldn't even take a shower. I would just go to the bathroom and switch on the water and make my mom feel like I was taking a shower and come out because I was so lazy, I couldn't be bothered. All I wanted to do was either play or sleep or watch TV. I'm sure a lot of you connect with this, right? So what changed me? I was about 18 years old and my best friend was dating a boy. What do you do when you date a boy? You want to look your best. So she wanted to lose some weight to look good. There was a really good uh, deal happening at one health club which had just opened, two for the price of one. She forced me to go with her. I had absolutely no interest. I was more interested in eating my plate of biryani and my big pizza all by myself. But alas, you give in to peer pressure because they tell you, if you love me, you'll do this, and you want to be accepted by your peers. So I went into the gym, the gym with her. She knew exactly what she wanted to do, right? She had a boyfriend. I had nobody. So I went to this little class that said aerobics, and I saw people dancing around. And I thought, 18 years old, I'm the best dancer in the world. So I go into this class and think, I'm going to totally kill it, right? I was so mistaken. I realized that I had no ability to listen to instruction. When the teacher said, knee up, I was kicking people. When she said, go right, I was going left. I was so embarrassed. I'm sure a lot of you have gone to a group class, made a couple of mistakes, and you think, Oh my God, everybody's looking at me. I made such a fool of myself, right? And then you don't go back. What happened with me? I thought I made such a fool of myself. I have to prove it to them that I can do it right. So I went back again. Let me tell you a little secret before I go on. In a group class, nobody but you is watching yourself because everyone is thinking the same thing that everyone's looking at them, so they're trying to do everything right. So instead of looking at you, when they're looking in that mirror, they're just looking at themselves. So guys, go to group classes, make mistakes, and learn from them. Right, so I kept going back to this group class day after day, trying to get all the movements right. One day, the instructor was unwell. She calls me up at home. It was the age before the mobiles were on. And she was like, will you teach my group class? I was a bit surprised, me, teacher class, which I barely know how to do. She said, just go on and put the cassette, that age, cassette. No DVDs, no iTunes. Play the cassette and do what you remember. There I go to the group class, I play the cassette. I surprisingly, I even surprised myself, knew the entire routine. Not only that, I think somewhere in my subconscious, I had heard what she was saying, and I was repeating it. And I realized another thing. I loved telling people what to do. Sit down. Go right. Go left. 
I loved it. It was like a dream come true. Here I am, not only teaching a class, but telling people do this and do that. Anyway, she offered me an afternoon class. It was great. I made some pocket money for college. And uh, my mom didn't give me enough money, unfortunately. Hi, mom. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. And I was introduced to fitness by my best friend, Namrata. That's me in my school uniform. thinking I'm really, really cool. And that's my best friend, Namrata. Unfortunately, Namrata didn't live to see what she had initiated and what it turned out to be today. Because on a fateful night in 1990, when we were 20 years old, she was shot in front of me by her father and it was the most devastating experience of my life. By the time I rushed her to the hospital, she was no more. I was completely heartbroken, shattered, devastated. I don't even think there are emotions that can describe what a 20-year-old goes through watching something like this in front of her. I was like a zombie. We were in our last year of college. I had to complete college because it was my mom's dream that I would be a graduate. My mom got married at the age of 15 and didn't complete her 10th standard and always wanted us to be graduates. And so I, like in a, my zombie state, completed graduation. There was an opportunity that the instructor who was teaching me aerobics said to go to the US and become an a trained instructor in aerobics. I asked my parents, and I think my parents seeing me in this state of devastation and sorrow and just wanted me to get out and go away for six months. My mother also, my parents didn't want me to go. We come from a Muslim family where you don't want girls to go abroad. This was in 1991 where you know things weren't as easy as it is today. But I think they just wanted me to go away. And uh, so I did. And who knew that my biggest escape would today be my biggest story because of my friend Namrata. I came back from the States, and I started aerobic classes, um, teaching in various places. It was fun. I earned money. I, 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 I taught people how to stay healthy and fit. And in the bargain, I did it for myself as well. Got out of that little bit of laziness. And after a few years, I decided that I wanted to learn something more. Because people kept asking me questions about different things that I didn't know. So I started studying more about fitness and decided to become a personal trainer. I was married by then. My husband supported me working. I would go to people's houses and train them because that was the norm in 2000, where you went to people's houses and trained them. And then we had kids. And I told my husband, I'm out of the house most of the day. And we lived in our own house by then. And we had a little guest room. So I said, can I start my studio in the guest room and call people home instead? It wasn't the norm then. People didn't do that. And initially, they were apprehensive. Luckily, I was a woman, so they didn't feel uh, you know, scared to come to my house alone. But uh, in today's day and age, I'm sure you guys would be, and you should be. Caution's always good. But uh, we started from my little guest room. We had more clients. I went into the living room. We lived in a terrace flat, and my ultimate dream was to start a studio on my terrace, convert a part of my terrace into the studio, and have people come there. And that was my dream, and I achieved it. And I really, really enjoyed what I was doing. The studious person in me, or the person the, who wanted to learn more, was always wondering, how do I help people get rid of that belly fat, including my own? After two kids, I had that little layer of belly fat that never went. I would do 100 to 1,000 crunches, but nothing would work. And I started researching on it and came up with Pilates. 
I studied uh, what Pilates was on the net. I found a school in California, and I went, I called them up and said, I want to come and study. They said, you need at least a year of practicing Pilates to be able to come and teach, I mean, to learn how to teach. And I said, well, I don't have that uh, resource in India because nobody in India at that time taught Pilates. They said, don't come, you'll waste your money, your time, your effort, and it's a really long journey. And I said, well, I'm determined, I'll come, I'm going to learn it, I'm going to stay in your studio till you guys throw me out, but I will make sure that I learn it. And I think that's the stubbornness in me, which uh, my parents tell me now that is a good thing, uh, used in the right way. So if you are stubborn, make sure you use it to your benefit to be better. And so I came back to India, where I was the first Pilates instructor. And what Pilates basically does for you is it works on your balance, your coordination, your posture, your alignment, uh, your stress levels. It helps you feel good. And it really makes you strong from inside out. Of course, none of us wake up in the morning and we do this, right? We learn, we practice, and we achieve what we want to do. And that, when I, because I was the first person who came to this country with Pilates, people didn't know whether they could trust me and why would they want to spend more money when they were very happy with their dumbbells and their tubes and their balls. So I just told them, come try it. Try a session. Of course, what really helped was having some clients who then embodied Pilates, and people saw what Pilates did to them. And so we got more and more people coming in and trying Pilates. I wanted to reach out to everyone to share the science, because I love what it does for your body. It works on you, whether you're 10 or you're 100, whether you're recovering from an injury or you're a super fit athlete. Pilates is for everyone, or even if you're a housewife doing housework, it will just make you do everything you're doing better. I wanted to spread it. I wanted more people to do it. But of course, alone, there was nothing I could do. I studied further. I called up my studio in America and said, can I become a master instructor where I can teach more and more people and spread this work everywhere? I went back, I studied, I came back being a master instructor in Pilates. And today, I'm very proud to say that I've trained more than hundreds of people. And we have that many instructors in our country who are teaching Pilates in remote villages and towns, and of course, the big cities too. So it's great because I completely believe that alone, I can't, but together, we can. And that's how I brought Pilates to India. Now, what does it take to get fit? So you know what? Let me show you how you can be fit in five minutes a day. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, let's stand up, everyone. And the good thing is, I'm going to show you only three exercises. And the three exercises can be done anywhere. Great. OK, so stand just in front of your chair with your feet hip width apart. Make sure that you're very close to your chair, but your backs of, the backs of your legs are not touching. Sit on your chair. Just sit. Seriously, sit. And stand up. And sit down. And stand up. And sit down. Make sure your bottom hits the chair. And stand up. Three. And sit down. Four. And stand up. Five, and if your knees are hurting, take your legs a little wider, and stand up. Six, and sit down. Seven, and stand up. Eight, and down. Nine, and up. Eight, ten. <laughs> and the last one, sit down, but stand up again. <laughs> and turn around, face your chair. OK, put your hands on the back of your chair, on the top of your chair, right as wide as you can without your fingers going off. Take your feet a little towards me, and I'm only standing in one place. Make sure that your head to your heels is in a straight line. Now bend your elbows and take your chest towards the chair. One, and push it back up. Two, and when you come back up, make sure you get your abdominals back with you. Three, 
and back up and squeeze your glutes a little bit four and back up and open your chest imagine your collarbones are smiling five and up and six and the most important thing guys and girls don't forget to breathe three more and up and two more and up and pull the abdominals in and up and the last one and up and turn around I love these smiles please sit at the edge of your chair edge don't fall off but sit at the edge get your hands behind your head bend your knees and now I mean, yeah, your knees are bent, sorry. <laughs> Pull your right knee towards your chest as you roll down towards it. One, and down. And two, and up. So just curl eight, and up, and nine. And every time you come up, guys, smile at me. And ten, and up. Super. That took exactly two and a half minutes. Do you guys feel more energetic? Do you feel like there's blood flowing in your body? Do you feel awake a little more? And do you feel like your heartbeat has changed rhythm? That those three exercises took exactly two and a half minutes. Every time you get up from a chair, or you're going to sit on a chair, imagine if you do these things. And you do these exercises three to four times a day. You do it for 10 minutes. And it only requires 10 minutes for you to get fit. Would you agree with me or not? OK, so that brings me to a point where some people got, most, most of you were amazing audiences. And you got up, but a few didn't. Because they didn't trust me, maybe, or they just didn't want to, or they had a problem. Attitude is so important. OK, before you even try it, if you don't get up, how will you know whether you will be successful or you won't? I wanted to tell you a story just to show you about attitude about my father. Five years ago, my father was detected with can lung cancer, stage three. And the doctors gave him eight months, nine months to live. And my dad said, don't tell anyone I have cancer because I don't want people to look at me differently. I want to do my work. And we were like, OK, he had to start chemo. The first question he asked his, uh, his oncologist was, when can I start working out? And the oncologist looked at him and said, why would you even ask me that? You're going for chemo. And he said, no, it makes me feel really good. I don't do heavy weights. I'm not like Salman Khan or Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I don't lift heavy weights. But I just go do some Pilates, and it makes me feel really good. And I want to feel good all the time. And the oncologist said, whenever. So my dad would go for chemo, seven days, be miserable, throwing up, heartburn, stomachache, nausea. But on the eighth day, when he felt well, he was in the studio. And nobody in my studio knew he had cancer. But I'd instructed them to just give him an easier workout because he wasn't well. And he would just do Pilates, come home. It was better for my mom and the rest of the family because he would be in a better mood. And that's what attitude does to you. It just makes everything so much better, guys. So in life, what I would tell you is always have a positive attitude, because that's what's going to be your success story. Thank you very much.